All right, setting. Diane, take three things on setting that you think that you emphasize. Uh, I'm going to give you two. 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 Two each. All right. Um, who is, who's your middle, your fantastic setting middle? No. All right, see, look at that. Hammy, come on over here. I implore you to teach all your skills to all your players. We have so many people that come in our gym with no overhead setting skills. In fact, they say, don't put your hands over your head unless you're going to block. So this, we, for our system, we actually have our middles as our auxiliary setter if our setter passes the first ball. And the biggest thing I want them to do is tell me where the ball's going to go. So I want them to always face their target, okay, and then have their hands outside their eyes. That, to me, has been the biggest key. You get kids that face their target, and then they take the ball that's coming from the side, and they take it in a different direction. Okay? So I'm going to toss you a ball. All I want you to do is make sure you're facing your target, hands are outside your eyes. Got any eligibility I can take from you? Good. Sorry. Good. So I'll move you around a little bit. Again, I want her to make sure and face her target, wherever it's from. And that one she faced during the time. Face it before the ball gets there. Try it again. Face it before it gets there. Hands are, both hands are outside your eyes. Face, outside. Good. And then the follow through, I want the follow through through your target line. Okay? So if you get your face there, you get your hands outside your eyes, and you follow through the target line, now you can start setting frontward and backward. Backward? Yeah? Sweet. So face. Good. Okay? Face your target. Hands outside your eyes. Set through your target line. Both hands through the target line. Very nice. Okay? So that way you can convert some of those basketball players that get the one wrist and back up after they set. Get them going through the target. Michael, two things on setting. Uh, two things on setting. First thing would be uh, making sure that the lower half of your body is balanced and as strong as possible. And so what we try to teach is just a little bit of a staggered step. So what Garen's going to just set back to me so you can see the side view come on out a little bit more. So we can see here just a little bit staggered step. So we've got a little bit of strength and power both front and back. Now, she may be also showing you a little bit of a left-right rhythm. So in general, that weight is being shifted from the back to the front. Even if she's setting back, this is a valuable tool. It's not very specific. It's very slight in the weight shift. And she does a good job of getting in a good rhythm. Okay? In addition to good feet, slightly staggered, we want her hips slightly behind her, shoulders forward, and hands are shaped like the ball. When she draws those hands up, it's ball width all the way through, and it stays the same width all the way through before, during, and after contact. Those hands are the same distance apart. There's not a lot of jittery motion. It's, not a, it's a very smooth motion in the rhythm, so it's a good follow through. Her hands, what we often say, hands are twins, so make sure they're the same and still ball width apart. Mark? Yeah, Mark. I'm using, I'm using Alex because she just told me then that mm -hmm. she learned to set at our camp. Mm -hmm. So she better be good. Like so we'll see how she goes here. <laughs> one, one thing you're going to find when teaching young kids is where do they put their hands on the ball? Because they're doing this kind of stuff. And, oh, that was a pretty good set, actually. They're doing that kind of stuff. Where do you put your hands? What, what is a good hand position, one, relative to your body? And two, what should your hands look like when they're on the ball? And one thing we do with people that come to us that aren't very good at setting the ball is getting a ball in front of you and getting the curved panel in front of you like that and putting your hands around either side of that curved three-part panel there and having your thumbs the same distance apart as your forefingers. So that's about uh, five, oh, five centimetres, two inches about apart there. And they are the same distance apart. That is the same distance apart as your thumbs. Now if we get Alex to do that, now we'll get you to face everyone here. Now, if she puts her hands up here, and then just without moving her hands, I'll remove the ball. That's ball-shaped hands. That's a nice position to get your hands before the ball gets there. Because ideally, you want the ball to settle into your hands, like that. Does it have to touch all 10 fingers? No, it doesn't. Your little finger may be off the ball, like that, for some people. That's fine. But the ball needs to stick in there. So now, Alice is going to do this. I'll just throw the ball up. She's going to catch it. Look at that. You learned, where did you learn? Oh, that's right, Oregon State camp. Just tell your younger players that. So the ball sticks nicely. If it bobbles around in the hands, then they don't have ball-shaped hands. If the ball sticks, 
ball shaped hands, then they can just look, thumbs, fingers apart. So that's your ball shaped hands. And then we really work on arms and palms. Palms, these things, I don't know what that sounds like to you, but the palms of your hand in the direction that you set the ball. So we're working on ball shaped hands, arms and palms in the direction that you're setting the ball. None of this stuff, you see a lot of that with little kids where they're really trying to fire the ball, just parallel hands pointing in the direction that you're setting the ball. So that's a good starting point for one, where you put your hands on the ball, so what they look like. So we'll go back to ball shaped hands, remove the ball, that's nice ball shaped hands there. And from that point, pushing against me, there, releasing the ball out as she sets. No Superman stuff. No, none of this, sorry, you weren't doing it, it's all right. She learned at the Oregon State Camp, so she's good, but really working like that. So key points for just starting with beginning setters or older, older players that haven't ever learned to handle the ball before. Russ, and we're ending with Russ here on setting. Okay, as that sign up there says, what's the art of coaching? The art of coaching was at the beginning of the year, I had, if my setter took the ball on the right back, she gave it to my Libro, and the Libro, who I thought was pretty athletic, would set the ball to my right side, and that was what our game plan was, all right? But we got ourselves in a match, and she had four swings for match point, and she didn't score on them, all right? Down balls, I'm not a patient guy. I said, okay, we're done, all right? I don't care if I stole it from Brazil, where Sergio was magnificent at taking the ball and setting it. That was Brazilian men, you're not, all right? So we went to setting, doing like Diane said. We gave it to our middle blockers. Middle blockers set the ball. We limited a lot of errors. It was easier for our right side hitter to take big swings. And so that's it. You have to make a decision for you what's going to be your best chance of winning and losing. Don't worry about what other teams do. Don't worry about what the national team did. For some of us that have been in coaching for a long time, so I'm on my fifth or sixth national team coach. If every time there was a new coach, I had to change everything because the new national team coach said it, uh, none of my players would listen to me during the change in the quad because they'd say, last year you said this. This year you're total. So, hey, you're coaching your team. You do what's right for you. To me, it makes sense. Two simple things for setting from my standpoint. The first one is I tell my setter, get to the target, all right? The ball is served, get to the target, and then go to the ball, all right? Don't combine the two. Don't take your time and try and intersect because every time you do that, you're getting in the way. So whoever the setter is, give me a setter. Good. You start back here, run to your target, and then, go, and then find the ball. Terry will toss you the ball, then find the ball. Good. Again, next ball, same thing. To the target, and then my second key, huh, good luck. <laughs> I, was want, I want to see she but she got to the target though. Yeah, that's yeah. great. That's good. And that's why some people run a 6 2. All right, we'll try that again. <laughs> Get to the ball. I hope you can hit. All right, let's go. <laughs> good. And then the other, the second thing, I want, my, I want them to be square to the target. That's it. You know, there's so many people that teach so many different things, and they're setting clinics, and they're setting workshops, and they're setting academies, and I just look at it and I go, really? You know, what do, what do I do to make my setter better? I have the best passers passing, and I tell the hitters, this is what you're hitting, and I say to the setter, set the best hitters. It's really complicated stuff here, all right? Probably not going to find it in a book. Uh, maybe you'll find it outside when we're smoking cigars at halftime today. But, uh, you know, that's the, that's the stuff to me that's really important on, on setter training. They need to set. They need to set real balls that are passed, and then they need to set real hitters. That's what they need to do. They don't need to be standing in the corner setting a thousand balls and then looking at their hands and taping and whoo -hoo, baby. That's that scares me when I see that. He's one of a kind. We know that. So. <laughs> All right, little raffle to end before we take a 10-minute break.